Hello, I'm Dr. Robert A. Nelson. I am teaching a course on satellite communication systems engineering, which is a three-day course sponsored by ATI. And I'm going to be uh, presenting here a short segment dealing with a very important topic on bandwidth. Now, bandwidth is one of the basic concepts that I want everybody to understand very carefully because it's related to the data rate that one can support for a given method of modulation, a given method of coding, and a, diff, uh, a specified method of uh, raised cosine filtering at baseband level. Now, the definition of bandwidth is that it's the range of frequencies necessary to transmit the signal. Bandwidth is equal to the maximum frequency minus the minimum frequency. Now, under certain circumstances, the bandwidth can be equal to the data rate, but not under all circumstances. And that's an important point that I want to emphasize. The question is, what is necessary? There are many different measures of bandwidth. There is the equivalent bandwidth, also called the noise bandwidth. There is the occupied bandwidth. And there's an allocated bandwidth. This curve represents the power spectral density for a form of modulation called phase shift keying, DSK, as given by this expression right here. Power spectral density is the power per unit bandwidth as a function of frequency. Actually, it's infinitely wide for what is called NRC signaling, but in practice, it's truncated by means of the filtering that we use at the baseband level. Now, you can see here different measures of bandwidth. This is the half power bandwidth, the bandwidth required to uh, contain all the power, which is one half up to the point where it's one half below P. This is the equivalent bandwidth, which contains uh, all of the power that would be equivalent to what is under the entire curve. Uh, then we have the null to null bandwidth. Uh, then we have the 99% uh, of power bandwidth and other measures of bandwidth for energy containment, including power below 35 dB below P or 50 dB below P. The equivalent bandwidth is the bandwidth that would be required, such that if we were to draw a rectangle whose height is equal to peak power spectral density, it would contain all of the power that is being transmitted, which is represented by the total area under this curve. And by integrating the area under the power spectral density, dividing by the peak power spectral density, we find that the width required is equal to the data rate for BPSK modulation. And in general, for any form of PSK modulation, the bandwidth is equal to the symbol rate. Now, the symbol rate is equal to the total transmitted bit rate, including extra bits for coding, divided by the number of bits per symbol. And the transmitted bit rate is equal to the data rate divided by the code rate. So this gives us a complete expression for the equivalent bandwidth in terms of the data rate that's being transmitted the number of bits per symbol depending on the method of modulation, and the code rate depending upon the method of coding. The occupied bandwidth takes into account the expansion in bandwidth necessary for shaping the pulses at baseband level so that the overall bandwidth is minimized. And uh, this extra expansion factor is given by this factor K, 1 plus alpha where alpha is called the roll-off. A typical value of the roll-off is 0.2 or 20%. We speak of then 20% raised cosine filtering, so that the bandwidth expansion factor in that case would be equal to 1.2. This then would be the complete expression for the occupied bandwidth in terms of the data rate, the bit per symbol, the code rate, and the bandwidth expansion factor due to baseband filtering. The occupied bandwidth would be the practical bandwidth that we would have in an amplifier or one that would be specified, specified by some regulatory um, uh, constraint. Here is an example, a practical example, for a direct broadcast satellite system. Uh, a typical example might be a TV system like DirecTV. In that case, the transponder bandwidth 
would be 24 megahertz. This would be the occupied bandwidth. Now, taking a somewhat simplified example, suppose that the me method of modulation is QPSK, where there are two bits per symbol. This stands for quaternary phase shift gain, where there are four possible phase states, and uh, each phase state represents a symbol consisting of two bits. Suppose further that there is rate three-fourths forward error correction coding, and that there is 20% raised cosine filtering, so that the bandwidth expansion factor is equal to 1.2. Then solving for the data rate by the ex expression on the preceding slide, we find that the data rate that can be supported is equal to uh, two bits per symbol times the rate uh, three-fourths coding times an occupied bandwidth of 24 megahertz divided by the baseband bandwidth expansion factor of 1.2, giving us 30 megabits per second. Now in practice, after compression, the average or typical uh, data rate necessary for a standard definition uh, TV program would be in the vicinity of 3 megabits per second. In order to avoid intermodulation effects on the satellite, one would multiplex all of the individual program data streams into a single carrier. So there, therefore, if the single carrier had a total data rate of 30 megabits per second, then with each one, uh, each uh, program channel requiring on average about 3 megabits per second, that means that we could support 10 channels altogether. Now, um, each uh, satellite has a uh, total bandwidth of 500 megahertz and with 24 megahertz transponders we can support 16 amplifiers in, in each of two polarizations giving us 32 amplifiers altogether on the satellite uh, at a given orbital slot. Uh, therefore if each amplifier could support 10 channels that means that one satellite or one combination of satellites at a given orbital slot can support 320 channels. Now, there is further and further demand for more capacity, more channels, or higher definition television, HD TV instead of a standard definition TV. And so, therefore, one would consider uh, what would happen if you went to a higher order method of modulation. Let's go beyond QPSK. Consider, for example, 8PSK. Now there are three bits per symbol. So instead of having a factor of 2, we have a factor of 3. And now the data rate that can be supported is 45 megabits per second. Under the same assumptions made here, we can now have 15 channels per amplifier. And thus we have achieved an increase in capacity of 50% uh, compared to QPSK. This is an example of how we have trade-offs between power and bandwidth, and is a very good example of how the basic relationship for bandwidth can be used to determine the data rate that can be supported.